Thank you. State your appearances, please. <clears throat> Afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Andrew Babnik on behalf of the plaintiff who is appearing here as well. Name, please. Brianna Kingsley. All right. And where are we on this case first? Uh, Your Honor, we've had a few hearings on this. The court uh, has set this for a trial at this point based on the affirmative defenses that were asserted in the matter. I believe there's no triable issue. Uh, if you look at the answer filed by Ms. Kingsley in the matter, she admits to the non-payment of rent. She admits to the fact that there are damages to the unit. The court is aware there were police reports filed and attached with the complaint that the damages um, were the result of the defendant herself breaking the windows, refusing access. The landlord is now going to be outside of the certificate of occupancy that was issued because repairs can't be made. They can't get access to the property. It continues to deteriorate. As a result, there's a broken window, broken doors on the interior, broken doors on the exterior. We filed a notice uh, to have this terminated as a result of the health and safety hazard, as well as the non-payment of rent, and we'd be asking for a judgment at this time. Response. I have it prepared here. I will pull it up. There is a tree to me. Okay, this was what I received from attorney with the legal aid, Tracy Jensen. And there are several issues at hand, including procedural defenses. In regards to my written statement and the statements made by attorney Babnick, the property is not damaged. The pictures that the landlord included, I have countered and included pictures of the house in its current condition. The house was inspected by the Ypsilanti Building Code, Ms. Jamaica Berry, in October. In October, I also filed a formal complaint with the city of Ypsilanti through the C-Click Fix Notification System, a governmental agency of the issues with the uh, habitability of the home. I have filed a case with the Fair Housing Administration there are many things that we could focus on. I would like to focus on the fact that I was denied a disabled parking spot. And according to Michigan legislature section 600, and that is 600.5720 says that uh, if it's an alleged termination was intended primarily as a penalty for the defendant's attempt to secure or enforce rights under the lease or agreement or under laws of state, governmental subdivision, or United States, they deny my that parking. I filed several complaints at the city level, and I am defending myself here. The alleged termination part B was intended primarily as a penalty for the defendant's complaint to the governmental authority with a report of the plaintiff's <laughs> violation of the health or safety code or ordinance. The allegations made by the landlord, I wanted to bring in a third party perspective. So I contacted the Land Building Code Department. Mr. Maker came out and did an inspection and found 12 violations on the landlord's uh, at the landlord's responsibility. In regards to this statement by attorney Bagnick that they, they have not been allowed to access the unit, that is so false. Her husband, Mitch Carrick, busted down the door and I was not able to secure the unit. This, this, isn't, this isn't the time for me to receive. I think there are tribal evidence. issues and I can- complete. Thank you. Yes, That's sir. all you needed to tell me. And when I look at that, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set, I'm going to do two things today. I'm going to set it for a final settlement conference um, on this. 
we'll hash out specifically what issues are going to be litigated. The parties are going to be need to be ready to go to trial when I set the trial date at thereafter. All right. Um, I'm also going to order regarding escrow, and I'm just going to say this to you, Ms. Kingsley, that you coming into court and posting escrow in one dollar bills. Um, this court views is just harassing my clerks and making my court, my clerks go through that process. It is something that I'm not going to tolerate. There is no reason why you have to bring single dollar bills in. You did that when you paid the $111.11. You also did that when you paid $444.44, which my clerks had to count out. You also did that when you paid today the $666.66. So on my own motion, I'm going to order that as you post escrow, that you may only post escrow in denominations of U.S. currency, not less than $10 bills. It is further ordered that from you on this case because of your abuse of the process and my clerk's office, are ordered that they are ordered to accept no $1 or $5 denominations of US currency for you for the purposes of escrow. And I have signed that order. We will present that to both parties. See everybody on March 19th. Quickly, can the court, I mean, what's the registry of the court as far as the escrow? There is a $111.11 posted by our records, it was posted on January 8th, 2024. On January 10th, 2024, there was posted $780. On January 22nd, 2024, there was posted $1.11. On February 5th, 2024, there was posted $444.44, and I think today, correct? Yes. Today, it was posted $666.66. If I may, Your Honor. Go ahead. I just want to establish that I paid the full amount through February, and there is a balance ready for March. This is not an issue of paying the rent. My issue isn't with whether or not you pay rent. It isn't anything like that. You do, will not be trying to bring singles in, trying to make some point to my clerks. They have nothing to do with whatever the issues are here. They are here trying to serve the public. You will not hand them $600 worth of $1 bills for them to count out. It just won't happen. And I've issued that order. Okay. Would you like any response to that, or we can just move forward? You can make whatever response you want. I'm just telling you, don't bring any singles in here trying to post escrow. Don't bring any $5 bills trying to post escrow. $10 or higher. Understood. That's it. Going forward, Your Honor. Is, is there an adjourned date, Your Honor? I'm sorry, I didn't know. I, I March 19th, 2024, 9 a.m., in person. Your Honor, if I may continue. I just... Thank you, Your Honor. If I may. Go ahead. Right, so I did confirm with the clerk that all U.S. is accepted. No, long, no longer on this case. That yes, is my true. that is my order. Thank you. I'm done. We are done. Thank you, Your Honor. I understand. March nineteenth. At what time? Nine a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Have a wonderful afternoon. I will do. You do the same. I'll do my best. I am grateful. Lines of Clover Lane versus Juan Brown. Good afternoon, Judge Carrie Zanon, P67390, on behalf of plaintiff. Juan Brown. You haven't checked it. No. You solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. I do. Your Honor, plaintiff, at this time, this is second or a third hearing. Plaintiff moves for default judgment. 
Rent to retain $6,014.67, court costs of $176.04 for a total rent to retain of $6,190.71, asking for possession a writ issue date of February 26 of 2024, and I have a judgment prepared. May I get your <laughs> judgment to the plaintiff? That is by default for possession. Redemption amounts in the amount requested for writ issue in 10 days. You Madam, you need to get a lot of enjoyment out of that, didn't you? But I have, I have <laughs> no, hey, you're the smirk on no, your face. No, 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 yes. I always, yes, say, no, I always no, say, I noticed a smirk and so did Alan. Oh, Judge, actually, I, I just, always get called after one of the ones that might be waiting for I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> you know it's right because I saw the look on your face. Yeah. <laughs> I just always get lucky, Judge. <laughs> And some days it's just not worth the court finds a clover lane versus and cano. With my behalf of Miss Evans, proceed. Absolutely. All right. Your motion, sir. File the motion for bond, Your Honor. I think the storyline of that motion, as the court can tell, is that Antoinette shouldn't have done it. She's sorry that she did it. It's not going to happen again. I apologize. It was honestly a big mistake. It was obviously a very big mistake, Your Honor. It was a poor decision. Um, I mean, she wished she could go back in time and stop it, but she can't. She's tried to take some proactive actions, uh, deactivating her social media account. Um, she has, um, she turned herself in the next day. She called the police and said, you know, I have a warrant. I need to be turned in. Uh, so I'm, I am, I am heartened by that, Your Honor. A lot of people, when faced with a warrant, they they leave and they they don't come back for months and months and months. Um, Antoinette made the right decision by by turning herself in. She's been there for for a couple of weeks now. I mean, she's had some time to reflect on it. So the way she expressed her feelings about the case. Was, wrong. was was wrong. It was inappropriate mm -hmm. to do that. I mean, I was keeping with this lady, your, uh, your honor, and I didn't, I didn't know nothing about this case. Like, and it's like, I was frustrated, and I just felt like it was wrong for her not to tell me that I had this case on me. There's a lot of frustration there, your honor, as the court can tell. Um, and we got the video. I, I think so. The video was actually taken um, back in December. I, I don't know that the time. I mean, that there was a no contact order between her and, and the and the mom. There is now, and she is absolutely uh, going to respect uh, that a hundred percent. She's going to respect the social media. Uh, no social media, hundred percent. She deactivated her Facebook, which I think is is a step in the right direction. Um, and she is very much feeling the sting and the reality of, of what happens when you air out business that shouldn't be aired out, Your Honor. Um, that was something that she did that she can come before the court and say, I'm, I'm absolutely not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. She's hoping that this court will, will give her a second chance uh, to be out there um, to follow the rules. She has worked a job now for 11 years. Um, she can still work the job. It, if she, if she gets out. Um, but I, I think if she's in for a long time, it, it's not going to be there forever. Um, she's been sitting there for two weeks around her thinking, you know, I, I shouldn't have done that. And I, I think she's coming to the court in a place where she's not going to make that same decision again, Your Honor. Ms. Your Honor, um... Yeah, this is one of those times where I'm actually at a loss for words. Uh, this is completely appalling. This is far beyond frustration. This is cruelty. It's re-victimizing a child and her mother. It's disgusting, quite frankly. Um, I'm going to leave the rest of the court. I, Mr. Burks has done a fine job with this motion. Um, I think the fact that she has worked for a school district and to my understanding, unless I'm mistaken, is finally going back to the court for children is disturbing. Um, this woman should be nowhere near children. 
given the nature of her friends. Uh, but with that, Your Honor, I, I will leave it to the court. Uh, I think I've made my case do you remember when the accusations regarding Facebook and other things came up at the court hearing? Me or Ms. Evans, Your Honor? Yeah, either of you. You were both. Oh, no, the video yes, was from remember. December 26. Well, but there was a question. The I accusation didn't... came up. And it was basically directly put forth to you from me as to whether or not that had occurred. May I say something? Well, I did. And, uh, hold on. And either directly, I mean, I can go back and get it either directly or certainly by implication, it was said that it did not occur. That people's addresses, other things weren't put out there. Yes, sir. And I can see in my mind's eye your face as you were telling me that. And I remember you kind of walking out kind of smugly and just so self-assured that you had just gotten away with something. And no, I knew. Had, I, oh, I knew. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. And then with a matter of minutes, I received the video. I'm going to be honest with you. I was angry <laughs> because I believe that you purposely misled the court. And you're lucky you have the attorney that you do because otherwise I was just sending people to get you. Oh, no, I was going to turn myself. No, 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 no. You didn't even know there was a warrant out. <laughs> By the time I got that that video, I was just going to send people to find you and tell no one because you out and out misled this court. Let the court wrap up first. Yes, sir. Anything else you want to say? I think Ms. Evans would like to address the court, Your Honor. Well, Your Honor, when I did go, I didn't know if I should have said yes or no. When I did go on live, I didn't know that the video got screen recorded. It, it was off, so I didn't know if it was a video. I knew it was a video. I didn't know if it was still on there. It got screen recorded. That's how they, the video was still going around. But I made that video December 26th, which I wasn't talking about the kid, none of the victims. I was talking about the mother in this case. Who I was had a relationship with. Sorry, sorry. I really do apologize. I mean, I didn't know it's going to cause me to go to jail. Oh no, you were sure that day you had gotten away with it. No, I, yeah, you were. I mean, I watched you as you walked out of this court. I was nervous. I was scared. Like oh, I don't know if it no, was a video. No, no. You know what? Let me tell you something. You can try to play a game with me if you want. I watched exactly how you walked out of this courtroom. Like you had gotten away with something. And when that video came in, it would be one thing, and I usually give people the benefit of the doubt. If you had been mistaken about something, if you had, then fine. I'll give you that benefit of the doubt. Yes, sir. But there is no doubt in my mind that day, you just felt so self-assured that nobody was gonna find out, nobody was gonna do anything. I'm not getting caught, I'm not doing this. And like I said, within a matter of minutes, that video shows up. So you can sit there in your head and play this game with yourself about you didn't mean to do this or you didn't know this or you didn't know that. You can do that if you want. The reality is you got caught. And if you remember my warning, my warning to you, as I said, if, that, if there is a video, because the people didn't know for sure that I was going to issue a bench warrant. You remember me saying that? Sure. Well, the one thing that you'll know about me is I'm a man of my word. 
And that's exactly what I did. Motion for bond reduction is denied. Defendant's bond will remain as the motion is denied. Defendant's, mo defendant's bond will remain as denied in this case. We need to set it for a new date. Um, I have this one set for what date is it set? Yeah, I believe it's Judge, given her status, we just set this for prelim date. You got to, all the discovery. I, I well, I have the the paper reports, um, so I'm confident I have what they can provide me. Yes. Okay. I'll be ready to proceed. Pardon? <laughs> we're re we're re ready to move forward. Yes, Your Honor. People, can you have your witnesses available the sixth or the thirteenth? Or the 20th, which would be I know that the 6th, the 15th, or the 20th. 6th, the 13th, or the 20th. 